Welcome to the channel. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do you set up an assembly? What's the easiest way to get one started and to start assembling things? I'm going to just show you that I am on the latest version of FreeCAD. It's version 1.00. And we'll get started. We'll just do it. This is just a quick um, video so that you can refer back to it when you want to do an assembly. This is how you start an assembly. So in this file I have two models I have a base and I have a pin and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an assembly where I have a one base and four pins and then I want to put each pin into the hole and I'm going to create some different joints so you can see how they work so the first thing you need to do is have the parts that you're going to assemble in an assembly and they don't have to be in the same file so they can be in separate files but I'm just going to do it all in one just to show you how to do it I will show you where you would um, include it if it was in another file okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the assembly workbench and once you're in the assembly workbench you're going to see this toolbar the first one here is create an assembly so we're just going to do that once we create an assembly now we need to add some parts to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my part over here and I'm just going to turn that off. And so that's one of the reasons why I like to have everything in parts so that I can turn them off. I can manage them all in one go. So now we're going to add parts or insert components to our assembly. And the first one by default is going to be the locked one for me. So I've made that the default. If yours asks you, do you want to lock it? then lock it in. So the base is that piece there that's locked, you can see. And I can choose to open a file and bring in another file. But because these parts are in the current file, I don't need to open any file. But if you wanted to, if you, if you wanted to find a part in another file, you can open that file and then the parts would be listed here. So now what I'm going to do, I have the base part into my assembly. I'm going to add the first pin and I can move that pin. So I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to move it to the left and then I'm going to add another pin. Notice that it says now I've got two inserted. These are identical pins. I'm going to pop that one over there and then I'm going to insert a third pin. I'm going to bring it up and move it this way. And when I'm moving it, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm grabbing the arrow that moves in the direction and that allows me to move it in just one direction there. Then I'm going to add the fourth one. I'm going to bring it this way and I'm going to bring it that way and raise it up. Now I've got four pins. They're all identical and I'm going to join them in there. So once I've got all my parts into the assembly, I'm just going to say OK. And now I'm going to look at my assembly. So I want to make a cylindrical joint for this first one. So what I'm going to do is select cylindrical joint. And then I'm going to select this surface. Now when I do that, notice the local coordinate system that pops up. I want the Z, the blue one, to be pointing up and down. If it's not pointing up and down, I've selected it wrong. So now I select that edge. And then I can do the same for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tip my assembly this way. And I'm going to do it on the bottom of this. And I want that blue thing to be pointing in and out. So if you look at that, the blue thing is now pointing in the right direction. So now I have my joint. And I'm just going to, for a second, I'm just going to say OK to that. And you'll see that I can push it all the way through. And I can rotate it. So it's now I'm able to rotate it. I'm able to move it up and down because that's what these these uh, cylindrical joints do. So what I need to do is to set some limits. And I'm going to do that by going back into my joint. And we'll go up here to this joint. We go to the cylindrical one. I'm going to double click it. And if you watch these numbers here, when I move this up and down, you can see that it's moving. I'm going to bring it to the position, roughly the position that I want. Getting closer so we can see. And there's my stop. So I want that to be my 
minimum length. And let me just try that to make sure it should stop there now. So it can't go any lower than that. And then I can make my maximum if I don't want it to come out or if I want it to just come out there, I can make that the maximum. And I'm not going to restrict my angles. I'm going to allow it to spin. So now it can come out that far and it can go into that stop. And I'm going to say OK to that. So now that cylinder will work properly or that cylindrical joint will work properly and it won't allow this head to go through the here. The assembly doesn't have any concept of interference. So like I can't say this is a body, don't let this body crash through that body yet. I think they're going to do that, but they don't have it right now. So um, that's how it works. In Blender, you can do that. You can say this body and this body would collide. So if I push this, it'll stop against that body. Okay. So the next one, I want to add a revolute joint. And that revolute joint is going to allow me to lock it in here. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to pick that. I'm going to go over here and pick that same edge. And now this is going to be important on this one. I need to pick the edge here. So I'm just going to pick that edge. And then if we pop that one, now you can see that that is locked in position. And it can rotate, but it's not going to be able to come out. So because a revolute joint. So I'm going to say OK to that one. And now it's locked in there. It won't. It won't go up and down, but it will rotate. Now, this next one, I'm going to do a fixed joint. So this is a fixed joint. The fixed joint is similar to the Revolute, except it won't let it rotate. It's going to lock it in position. So I'm going to click my fixed joint. I'm going to go to that edge again. I'm going to tip this guy up here, go in here, pick that edge. And now if we look at that one, He's locked in place. He's not going to go anywhere. It can't spin. So we're achieving the same end. But in this one, we can spin it. In this one, we can lift it up. And we can spin it. So I can lift it up. And I can spin it. And this one, I cannot move it. It's fixed. So those are all connected and then I can do a slide in joint so that's another one that would work in this situation so the slide in joint allows linear movement in a single axis but it doesn't allow them to rotate so I'm going to select my slider I'm going to go in here I'm going to pick that again then I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to do the minimum and maximum for this one so it can go right through the hole right now so I'm going to pick that one. I'll come down to there. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Now, of course, I could just calculate where I want this to be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that as my minimum. So now it can't go through. And I can set whatever I want to be my maximum. So I can say it can come up to there. That's my maximum. Say OK. And then... This one can slide up and down, but it can't rotate. This one goes up and down and it can rotate. This one can rotate, but can't go up and down. And this one doesn't move at all. So those are the basic four joints. I'm not going to go into all of these other pieces for this because I want it to be just a primer to get you started. That's how you do it. That's how you add your parts in. Of course, if I go back to the original and I make a change to these parts, that is going to propagate through my assembly. So if you've enjoyed this video and if it's helping you, please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to join us on Patreon or you can join, become a member here on YouTube. Uh, give this a thumbs up. Share it with your friends so that other people can see it too. That would be great. I'd appreciate that. And then uh, if you want to just buy us a coffee or if you want to do anything to help us to create more of these videos, I would appreciate it. Um, if you have comments, questions, suggestions, please leave those below and I'll look forward to making the next video. Thanks.